This is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. I just want to present this to you in a rough and ready way. I've lost all ability uh, to extract audio, which I had yesterday. Uh, it's gone. Every attempt, I've been working at this uh, all day. Uh, I just found this item from Hal Turner really interesting because it provides an alternative view of what's happening with uh, Ukraine Gate. Um, and it all revolves around um, CrowdStrike, which has its server in Ukraine, apparently. And that's what Trump was asking about. And it's all about a uh, CIA coup, which uh, Turner says that they're turning on the American people, what they used to uh, dish out to uh, people in other countries. So how much can you trust Hal Turner? Well, I don't know. Um, a bit, but um, certainly a whole lot more than CNN, the Washington Post, the New York Times, and the rest of the CIA media cabal. Um, I might believe them on some things, but I don't believe a single word that they say on this. So, just have a listen and make up your own mind. I'm not telling you what to think. Today is an absolutely stunning and simultaneously disgusting and simultaneously dangerous day in the history of the United States of America. Information has come out today, and um, our republic is in danger. The enemies we face, sadly, are enemies within. People in our own nation are actively working to negate the votes of more than 62 million American voters. They are out to overturn the legitimate results of an election. They are couching their efforts in legalistic terms when in fact there is no legal basis whatsoever for the actions being taken and these people clearly will not stop unless they are stopped. The information that came out today involves the highest levels of several departments within our federal government. The Department of Justice, the Central Intelligence Agency, the Congress of the United States, and I gotta I gotta tell you folks when I when I reveal what I'm about to to reveal, I think you're gonna be mortified. I, I really I think you're gonna be horrified. But reveal it I must because I am your trusted servant for news. And issues and material that the mass media simply will not cover. And I take my responsibility very seriously. Let's begin with uh, <clears throat> approximately 145 documents that uh, I obtained access to in my role as a reporter slash, you know, blogger slash journalist slash radio host, a media personality. And uh, <clears throat> within these 145 uh, pages of uh, government documents, I am able to report to you tonight definitively about the source of numerous leaks 
of law enforcement sensitive information to media outlets like 60 Minutes, the New York Times, and the Washington Post. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now the proof that former Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein personally made off-the-record leaks to 60 Minutes, to the New York Times, and to the Washington Post around and on the date that Robert Mueller was appointed as special counsel. It was Rod Rosenstein doing the leaking. Among these 145 pages, all of which, by the way, are Rod Rosenstein communications, there is a one-sentence email from Rod Rosenstein to Robert Mueller. And the one sentence in that email is as follows. Quote, The boss and his staff do not know about our discussions and off-the-record emails with major media outlets around the date of Mueller's appointment. The boss and his staff do not know about our discussions. Now, this is an amazing revelation because when you go back in time, you recall that on May 8th of 2017, Rod Rosenstein wrote a memo to President Trump recommending that FBI Director James Comey be fired May 8th. The next day, President Trump fired Comey. Uh. Three days later, however, on May 12th, Rosenstein sent an email assuring Robert Mueller the boss and his staff do not know about our discussions. Now, in a May 16th email, which was sent the day before Mueller's appointment, Rosenstein emailed former Bush administration Deputy Attorney General and current partner at the law firm Kirkland and Ellis, guy named Mark Phillip. And in that email, Rosenstein told the partner at Kirkland and Ellis, Mark Phillip, quote, I am with Mueller. He shares my views. Duty calls. Sometimes the moment chooses us, unquote. Now, <clears throat> the Department of Justice is still hiding very key documents. The Department of Justice is protecting Rod Rosenstein. FBI Director Jim Comey was fired at about 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time on May 9th, 2017, right? 5 o'clock p.m., May 9th. During the congressional testimony of Robert Mueller, Congressman Andy Biggs raised a question to Robert Mueller. He noted evidence of a phone call between Mueller and Rod Rosenstein on Wednesday, May 10th at 7.45 in the morning. So Comey was fired May 9th at 5 p.m. There was a phone call between Mueller and Rosenstein the next day at 7.45 a.m. Now, 
During his congressional testimony, Mueller told Andy Biggs that he couldn't remember the call. There is email. There is email from Rosenstein in which Rosenstein instructs his assistant to contact Mueller's assistant. And again, this is on May 10th, the day after Comey's fired. The email from Rosenstein to his assistant instructing the assistant to contact Mueller's assistant to schedule an in-person meeting between Rosenstein and Mueller on Friday, May 12th at 8 in the morning at the Maine Justice Department headquarters. And Congressman Andy Biggs confirmed this May 12th meeting during his questioning of Mueller. Other documents show that former acting FBI Director Andrew McCabe also wrote about the May 12th meeting. McCabe, in an email, said, quote, Rosenstein asked for my thoughts about whether we needed a special counsel to oversee the Russia case. I said I thought it would help the investigation's credibility, unquote. And Rosenstein's assistant then scheduled a meeting between Rosenstein and Mueller for May 12th at 8 a.m. At 9.30 p.m. that night, right? 9.30 p.m. that night, Rosenstein sent another email to Mueller, the boss and his staff, do not know about our discussions. Now, there are other emails that the Department of Justice is concealing. These things are being held so tightly, it's, it's uh, amazing. The email title is, I assume you realize, all right? But nobody knows or nobody's revealing what the rest of that email says. Let's go to Saturday, May 13th. Another meeting between Rod Rosenstein Robert Mueller, this time with Jeff Sessions. Folks, May 13th was a Saturday. So, Rosenstein turned out to be, in my view, a political snake. He was appointed Deputy Attorney General by Donald Trump and then began working almost immediately to harm President Trump, politically. Can you imagine the type of person Rod Rosenstein must be that he would not only turn on the guy who hired him, President Trump, but he would leak to 60 Minutes, the New York Times, and the Washington Post. It was during this uh, May 2017 week that Rosenstein discussed wearing a wire to his meetings with President Trump with the hope of getting some evidence, I guess you would call it, to aid in the uh, effort to have President Trump removed from office under the 25th Amendment. Now, Rosenstein repeatedly said he was just joking, but in this 145 pages of documents that uh, I've read through, 
Doesn't seem at all to me like he was joking. It gets worse, ladies and gentlemen. Fast forward to this week. The new impeachment effort to get Trump out of office, which is chaired by Congressman Adam Schiff. Well, it turns out today, we have, we have confirmed today, that this so-called whistleblower colluded with Congressman Adam Schiff Adam Schiff's staff and other members of the Intelligence Committee before he filed his complaint with the Intelligence Community's Inspector General. Yep. Here was the problem. There were several problems that this so-called whistleblower ran into when he wanted to raise this big stink. The Whistleblower Act, as it relates to the intelligence community, is very specific. The whistleblowing can only deal with actions by the intelligence community. The president of the United States is not in the intelligence community. That's problem number one for this so-called whistleblower. The second problem that this so-called whistleblower ran into is that the rules about whistleblowing is that you must have direct knowledge of what you're reporting. It has to be first-hand witness knowledge. But everything, and I mean everything, in this so-called whistleblower complaint is second-hand and third-hand. The alleged whistleblower said he talked to numerous other officials who informed him of A, B, C, D, and E. So it's hearsay. It's secondhand. It's in many, in some cases, it's thirdhand. Therefore, this so-called whistleblower could not make use of the whistleblower statute because it didn't meet even the most basic criteria. The president is not part of the intelligence community and the whistleblower did not personally witness or read or hear anything firsthand. (coughs) So there is no merit at all to what this whistleblower is claiming. But his claims are important. Not for the reason he puts forth in the conversation between President Trump and the Ukraine president the name Joseph Biden wasn't even mentioned what was mentioned a computer server from an organization called CrowdStrike that's what was mentioned And the President of the United States had 100% legal authority to talk about that because there is a mutual legal assistance treaty between the United States and Ukraine where the two countries have agreed in writing, approved by the United States Senate, to exchange information about criminal investigations between the two countries. So when President Trump talked about the crowd strike computer server with the president of Ukraine, it was completely lawful. And the reason he had to talk to the president of Ukraine 
about this particular computer server is it is in the possession of a Ukrainian oligarch. The server was located in Ukraine. The reason this is so important, you guys all remember back around the 2016 presidential election, a whole bunch of emails got released from the Democratic National Committee, from the uh, Hillary Clinton campaign. It was published at ad nauseum by WikiLeaks. The Democrats said that their computers were hacked by Russians. And they said that this was a theft of data and uh, this stuff shouldn't be out in the public, but it was out in the public. And, uh, you know, people got an eyeful of some of the corruption that was going on within the Democrat Party and some of the cheating that was going on with the uh, political campaign. So, this CrowdStrike server was one of the points through which a lot of these political and illegal shenanigans were routed. There's evidence on that server. Evidence of criminal wrongdoing. More importantly, when the FBI wanted to examine the Democrat National Committee servers to determine who, if anyone, had actually hacked in and stolen information, the Democrat National Committee refused to allow the FBI to examine it. Instead, the DNC hired CrowdStrike to examine their server. And the results of CrowdStrike's examination would be on CrowdStrike's computer server. So it was completely legitimate what President Trump talked to the Ukraine president about. They didn't even mention Joe Biden. But this is where this whistleblower comes back in. The whistleblower alleges that President Trump's conversation with the president of Ukraine was improper because President Trump is trying to personally benefit by digging up dirt on Joe Biden for the 2020 election. That's the whole basis of this whistleblower's complaint. And here, there's problems with that as well. There is no 2020 election yet. Nobody has even filed petitions to be on a ballot in any state for the 2020 general election. Those petitions don't get filed till next year. So for the whistleblower to frame his complaint as if Trump is trying to get uh, per dirt on Joe Biden by working with this foreign government, that's a bold-faced lie. Because there is no election just yet. Nobody's even filed for it. But secondly, that computer server by CrowdStrike has evidence of criminal activity. And the U.S. needs to have it to look into it. Here's the rub, folks. The reason the whistleblower raised this is because it's the CrowdStrike server. That was the server the CIA was using for its black operations against Trump. I'll be back Where after this. That... Bringing you news that the mass media simply will not report. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that CrowdStrike computer server was the machine through which the CIA did all their black operations against President Trump. And that machine is allegedly in the hands of a Ukrainian oligarch 
who will not give it up because he's holding that information over the heads of all the key players, the CIA, the Justice Department, various members of various uh, political parties, and the FBI, if that server gets recovered by law enforcement and is examined, a whole slew of people will go to prison. This whistleblower is a CIA employee who worked in the White House, right? He was told, a lot of CIA people were told, listen for anything having to do with that CrowdStrike server. Because if you hear anything about that CrowdStrike server, we're all in trouble. And when word got back to this whistleblower that President Trump had asked the president of Ukraine about the CrowdStrike server, alarm bells went off in the CIA. They all knew they'd be caught. This is the key, the CrowdStrike server. And that's why something had to be done about President Trump right now. And so what happened? This CIA employee wanted to file a whistleblower complaint, but he couldn't because, A, it, it didn't deal with a, a member of the intelligence community. The president's not a member of the intelligence community. And, B, none of the information he had was firsthand. So he ran into these obstacles right away inside the intelligence community. There are rules, and you got to obey the rules precisely. So what did this whistleblower do? He went to the House Intelligence Committee, Chairman Adam Schiff's staff. And he did this before he filed his complaint with the Intelligence Community Inspector General. Why is this important? Because it was Adam Schiff and his committee that first brought this so-called whistleblower complaint to the public eye. Adam Schiff knew about the complaint before the complaint was filed. And this whistleblower, he only dealt with Democrats on the House Intelligence Committee. He didn't go to even a single Republican. What does that tell you about the A, legitimacy of the complaint, B, the character of the person making the complaint, and C, the character of the Democrats on the Intelligence Committee who knew about this complaint up to a week before it was filed and then publicly demanded that the complaint be turned over to Congress. You're not going to hide this from us. They already knew it. They already had the information, and it gets worse. This alleged whistleblower complaint, turns out, was written by a team of lawyers who basically took what the whistleblower said, worked with staff on the House Intelligence Committee on how it should be worded, and then submitted it to the Intelligence Community Inspector General. This entire whistleblower episode is an intentional fabrication designed to prevent the President of the United States from working within a mutual legal assistance treaty with Ukraine to gain evidence of what is essentially an ongoing attempt at a coup d'etat 
in the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the chairman of the House of Representatives Intelligence Committee working with the CIA to oust an American president. That's what this is. And they're useful idiots like Rod Rosenstein and the Justice Department are all tagging along trying to do the same thing. Folks, let me frame this a different way. The very government employees that you and I are paying are misusing their jobs to destroy our choice for president. Our own public employees are doing this to us. And it gets worse. Today on my website, I posted a story that said, get a gun. Now. And I made clear that uh, there are things going to be revealed today, tomorrow, and in the very near future, which are going to go very bad here in the United States. And I would provide more details tonight. Well, I have been providing those details for the past 41 minutes. We have the House of Representatives, Chairman of the Intelligence Committee, and his staff, and the Democrats on that committee, working with the CIA in an effort to depose, on a fraudulent basis, our duly elected President of the United States. Here's where it gets worse. The very same underhanded and violent efforts that the CIA has used for decades to overthrow foreign governments are now being recruited to do the same thing here in America. There is an effort going on right now by rogue elements in the intelligence community of the United States to recruit and supply, train, and arm people to cause a civil war here in the United States. These folks have had a free hand for decades to basically do whatever they wanted, wherever they wanted, however they wanted, against whoever they wanted. And apparently that power wasn't enough for them because apparently they feel the need to be able to do that here in the country that gives them everything they have. They want to do to us what they have done in foreign countries. They want to overthrow our duly elected president and maybe more than him. And they want to cause civil strife, violent civil war here in the United States. And so I have the sad duty to, to report this to you with the hope that you will begin paying very close attention to what's actually going on in our republic, that you will now have been warned our republic is in danger, and that you will properly prepare by arming yourself in case the nefarious plans of these rogue intelligence people come to fruition. The American people 
have a right to protect themselves. And the folks listening to this radio show are strongly urged, get a gun.